It is with the love of God that I come to you today to share with you again in this devotion. I thank God for this privilege, the opportunity to be able to share with so many of you who find it important to share with others. And I thank God for the partnership that we have in spreading the word of God with friends, neighbors, loved ones, the extended family of God. Thank you so much for being our partner. Let's do this together for the Lord, for His glory. Who can tell how far these devotions will reach and who on the other side would be hungry to hear these devotions and who can tell they would take the devotions and play them as they are or listen to them and go back and feed their people on such. We are looking at this matter of revival. Will Thompson wrote many songs. One of the songs he wrote, he gave it the title, Jesus is all the world to me. From Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He said in the first answer, Jesus is all the world to me. He didn't say all the world to us. He can only speak for himself. He said, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him, I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go. No other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad. He is my friend. My question to you today, is Jesus your friend? Are you a friend of Jesus? Jesus loves you so much that he gave his life so that you can have everlasting life. He loves you so much. Those of us who have come to him and asked his forgiveness, he loves us so much that he has forgiven us of our sins and placed us into the family of God. He loves us so much that he has given us gifts and talents to be used for his honor and for his glory. He loves us so much that he has given us a brand new nature. So much he loves us that he has placed within us. God has placed within us the Holy Spirit of God to lead us and to guide us and to help us on our way. And today, I believe the Spirit of God is speaking to our hearts in regards to this matter of revival. And as I've said, this matter of revival is a personal matter. It calls for change. And we are looking at the effects of revival. What happens when one is revived? I say, and I will build on that today, that revival requires change. And I began reading for you of things that we need to put off and things that we need to put on from the book of Colossians. Again, reading from verse 1. And I stopped at verse 14 in my last devotion, so I'll pick up at verse 15. Where he said, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Look at verse 16. He said, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Wisdom is the proper use of knowledge. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. Yes, this is change. When a wife is revived, one of the effects will be submission to her husband. And when a husband is revived, verse 19 says, Husband, love your wives and be not bitter against them. You cannot say that you are in the will of God and you are bitter against your wife. You cannot say that you are in the will of God and you are not loving your wife. No. And then he says, Children, obey your parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. These are things that we would see in our lives when we accept Jesus as Savior and we are revived. And he said, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. So the, the father will be a true dad to his children. And he did not leave out servants and masters. He said, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Now, 
there are some people today who will tell you, I will do what I want. And then at the end of the day, they would expect to be paid for doing what they want. And here's what the Bible says, obey your master in all things according to the flesh. Now, if your master asks you to do something that is immoral, God says, no, you're not supposed to do that. If he asks you to do something that is not spiritual, something that, that is against God, that God does not expect you to do that. But if the master asks you to do something in regards to the work that he's paying you for, the Bible says, obey your master in all things according to the flesh. And then he said, not with eye service. Some people just love to do things when the boss is around. I remember when we were walking on the church, we had some young men around here from the church helping us walk on the church. And sometimes I would have to go and pick up some stuff, or go and do something else on the road. And those boys loved when I would go on the road. I've heard them testify many times after and said that when he would go on the road, one of them would look out and they would rest. They wouldn't do no walk. And then they would hear me coming and they would say, fear were coming. And then all of the boys would get up and be busy when I come and say, boy, those boys walking hard. That's eye service, as men please us. He said, don't do it like that. But in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever we do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of their inheritance, for we serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he had done, and there is no respect of post. There are changes to be made. Things and habits we must put off. Change to make. Things and habits to put on. We go back to the scripture in the book of Galatians and we read chapter 5, verse 1, and then jump all the way down to verse number 13. He says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with this yoke of bondage. In other words, he's saying to the believer, you are free. Christ made you free. Don't you go back into the way of the world or the things of the world. That is bondage. Don't entangle yourself with that. I, when I was young, had animals. And sometimes you would tie the goats in the bush. Goats love to climb up on trees and eat and the sheep in the clear. Sometimes you would go to those animals and you would find the very rope that you tied them with. They have entangled themselves wrong and wrong the tree. And if you didn't come, they would hang. And when I think of, he said, do not entangle yourself with this yoke of bondage. I think of those goats and those sheep, how they would entangle themselves to the point where at times I am sure that other people, animal, they hung right there by tangling themselves, by going around and tangling themselves. For brethren, he had been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love, serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, how important it is for us to know that we must love people like we love ourselves. He said, but if we bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led by the Spirit, we are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifested with our deeds, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance or discord, emulation or jealousy, wrath, rage or boss, strife which has to do with anger, sedition, selfish ambition and heresies, fraction, opinion, far off. You say envy, murdering, drunkenness, reveling, there's partying, and carousing, and such like of the which I told you before. As I've also told you in time past, that they would do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. 
meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Oh, this life that we are called upon to live as children of God is a serious life. Watch. When the child of God is born, the child of God can go back and many times do go back and do the old things of the flesh. But when God gets hold of the child of God and shows the child of God what he wants him or her to do, and the child of God responds in the positive and say, yes, Lord, and say to those other persons, I'm sorry, I'm not going this way anymore. I have to turn around. Sometimes it's hard for you to tell the other person that. But who will you follow? Will you follow God? Or will you follow that person or other persons? I'll be back next morning to share with you another devotion on the proof of revival. How do we know that we are revived? How can we look at somebody and say that person has been revived? Stay tuned. God bless you. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.